Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Artur Zaborski, and I have a great pleasure to host another Q&A session during uh, Kids Kino Industry. This time, we, uh, this time we'll be speaking to Terhi Kuliainen, uh, the filmmaker behind Eureka Project. Uh, hello, Terhi. Pleasure to have you here. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. So, uh, to be honest, um, when I wrote about, uh, when I read about um, Eureka, I was thinking about my childhood because, to be honest, I loved that kind of stories, uh, which connects um, the plot, the action, the storytelling with all of this science element included in it. It was something that I took a lot of knowledge from, and I still have a lot of nostalgia about that kind of project. Uh, so I am curious uh, if you wanted to make project like that uh, because you had the same experiences or that was something completely different that put you to it. Yeah, well, that's really nice to hear. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I remember things from my childhood when you would have, for example, animations about like human body or, you know, things that sort of show certain aspects of nature or, or whatever. And I always found it kind of exciting as well. Um, I mean, this is a live action film, so it's more kind of, you know, you're not sort of going inside a body or anything like that. Um, but we were definitely interested in sort of finding like a fun angle on, on science and sort of, you know, having like narratives that are like an adventure or a, a thriller or even like a bit of a horror angle or something like that, that is sort of fun and exciting rather than feeling like you're watching a, a lecture. Uh -huh. So what kind of uh, science elements did you uh, put into this project? Well, which of them are included? So we've actually already done um, a proof of concept film that was about this paleontologist called Mary Anning and her childhood. So that's about fossil hunting and um, and finding finding fossils. Um, but the other other topics, it's basically like an anthology series. So in every episode, you will be looking at a different different scientist and and their childhood. Um, but you know, you could, for example, look at Isaac Newton when he was still very interested in sort of um, before he sort of got into physics, he was interested in um, more sort of I guess what we now call alchemy, but it was sort of the start starting point for chemistry. Um, but at that point, it was still kind of more like magical rather than completely rational. Um, or, you know, you could look at somebody like Mary Curie, uh, where she got maybe her inspiration from as a child to get into science. So it's kind of kind of more based on maybe the characters as well and sort of what they were like as a child. And then, you know, how they got their start in, in getting onto the path that led them on to whatever they did as an adult. Gotcha, but uh, is it rooted in reality? Are you like uh, inspired by the true events you digged into the biography of all of these uh, scientists or is it a fantasy or creation uh, just for the story? Uh, I mean, it's a bit of both. So we definitely, um, you know, look into their background and sort of find find something in their childhood that sort of makes makes a good story, um, but I would say that we do take a bit of sort of dramatic license and artistic license, which you know sort of how we work the events around whatever the story is. Um, so, for example, in in the case of Sea Dragon, which is the proof of concept, um, we have like a heist narrative. So the, this big fossil that Mary Anning has found it's taken from her by this local landowner and she has to break into his house and get it back um, and it's sort of based on the idea that when the, throughout her whole life actually um, these uh, scientists would come to her who were usually men and sort of coming from London or wherever um, and they would come to her and they would sort of take the finding that she found and sort of um, appropriate them for themselves, sort of say that they, they found them. So we would kind of take something that reflects their life and events, but I guess we would sort of make it more fun and more adventurous. Um, so there's a bit of you know, artistic license involved. Mm -hmm, gotcha. And actually, uh, to be honest, when I think about science, when I think about scientists and people from that area, mostly into my head comes white men. 
You mentioned about uh, Maria Spodowska Curie. Uh, she is apparently a scientist from Poland that moved to France. I am curious if you managed to find more uh, diversity in the show. Uh, was it an issue for you? How did you manage with that? I mean, we are actually still in in sort of fairly early development stage in that we are still looking looking for characters. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is a bit of an issue in a way that it is harder to find sort of non-white, non-male non characters, but they do exist as well. Um, for example, Mary Seiko was a Jamaican Scottish black woman. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's also that those people sort of did exist, but they are not quite as sort of well known now as lots of the men who worked at the time would be. So it does take a sort of a bit, bit more digging and looking into it, but uh, um, you know, there's definitely characters around, who, you know, so you can have a sort of a diverse group of people. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really good news uh, that you are eager to do that. Uh, but uh, Terhi, please um, tell us actually uh, what uh, is the stage of the project? You mentioned that you are in the development, but uh, what are you looking for during Kids Kino? What kind of partners? Which, which stage are you, are you in and uh, how the event can help you? Yeah, so we've completed the proof of concept and we are really researching at the moment further characters. We have some ideas already and we've sort of looked into their background and sort of find suitable points in their lives where we could, what we could make the stories of. Uh, but we are looking for a co-producer and hopefully also writers to come on board with them who could sort of jump on board the development and really sort of dig into the topics with us as well. And um, and also maybe have some ideas of, of, of the characters. Um, gotcha. You mentioned that this is the anthology. Uh, so actually, are these episodes connected in any way, or each of them is a completely different story with, com with uh, completely different characters? I mean, they will probably be different stories with different characters, although in some ways, as it is a historical show, you know, sometimes there would be maybe connections in that somebody else's work was maybe based on something else that somebody else did before. I mean, at this point, we've sort of looked at just a variety of characters and they are not interconnected, but it would sort of depend a little bit on, on how we want to eventually structure the series, whether we could find people that are sort of interconnected through time. Um, but I guess we also kind of want to find a variety of different areas of science. So in that sense, it's maybe more likely that they are not going to be hugely interconnected, at least not all of them. Gotcha. And uh, actually making um, the story like that, uh, this, actually, this, this is actually historical film, uh, historical shows, historical episodes. So I believe that uh, for you, it uh, will be also uh, a little bit of challenge to talk about, uh, in each episode, to talk about a different um, period of time and the different reality, because you will have to prepare all of the scenography and everything differently for each of the episodes, right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, I would say that probably sort of the 19th century was probably kind of a prime time for science and also maybe a little bit before that. So I think quite naturally some of the stories will sort of sit in the same period. <clears throat> um, but I mean, at least when we were shooting for Sea Dragon, we sort of just had to find a location mm -hmm. from that period and you can still find those places. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, you know, in a way it's a bit of a challenge, but it also depends where the film is set. Like part of the, that film was um, on the beach where she actually worked. So, you know, the beach is still there, um, but that's kind of also the fun of it. And I think also for the kids to maybe then learn a little bit about different periods and, you know, you can sort of look at the social history as well, the position of women, um, things like that at the same time as, you know, you sort of look at the science. So hopefully there's sort of a different sides to the stories that you can, you can show. Mm -hmm. This uh, educational aspect of the project seems really great. Uh, I'm a huge fan, so I'm really happy that you are doing it. But I'm curious, actually, uh, who do you address um, this um, show for? Like, what is the target? Uh, what kind of age uh, of viewer uh, you are thinking about? 
So I would say probably sort of eight to 12 year olds, roughly that, that bracket. Um, and they will probably work slightly for an older audience as well. Um, but we, um, I think we sort of, if you think about where, where the store, where the sort of the topics would be in the school curriculum when the kids mm -hmm. get those things um, taught at them at school, I think that's sort of the kind of the natural time as well that when they would be interested in these stories. Gotcha. So they can, like the show, can add something for what they have in school. And thanks to the show, they can add something in the school uh, from what they achieved from the show. Yeah, I guess so. And I guess it is this idea of like informal learning that hopefully you will, you know, it might hopefully get some kids excited about science who may not otherwise like it at school or the kids who are already very into science, maybe they sort of get something a little bit new out of it. And um, on Sea Dragon, we also worked with an organization called the Association for Science Education. So they work with schools in the UK and we are creating um, like this package of educational materials with them that can go to schools with the film as well. Um, so there's basically like a, quite a lot that you can do with the educational angle with schools or then sort of with what we call informal learning. So outside school. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Terhi, for this conversation. Uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed uh, for the project and I cannot wait uh, when I will see it. Oh, great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Take care. You too.